right, we are once again at the helm of the HP DX5150. And this unit is actually going to be replacing that Dell Optiplex over there. So what I've done here, is I've got 4 gigs of RAM for this machine, right there. So I'll max that out, pretty much. I think you might, this might be able to accept 2 gigabyte modules, but I don't have any of those. So I've also pulled out a serial ATA 80 gigabyte hard drive. I actually pulled it out of the Northern Micro Spirit down there, because that thing can work with an IDE drive. Although it was a real pain to get that to actually work with the IT drive. What I did, I got a working dog on it. So, I had to pull this front panel off, get all of the screws out that I'm going to need. Screw that in. We'll put the hard, uh, the hard drive, the RAM in. And we'll go ahead and plug it up and fire it up. Alright, so there's the RAM in place. Here's the hard drive. This thing's got an ATI, what is that? It's an IXP400. That would be the Southbridge. It's an SB400 chipset. Two serial ATA channels. You've got this. So presumably you could ac I could actually install an IDE drive in here if I were to put a dual device cable in place of this one. It probably still wouldn't work. Because of course, you gotta be mindful of the positioning of all these connections. This is only a single device cable. But anyway, so that's in place now. So I can put that down. And I can put this in place. Alright, it's in place. Everything's in place. So I figure, well, I'd rather not have to move it around after I'm done. Before I'm done. So, I'll go ahead and let this thing fire up. If it will. I do remember it takes forever to post. Should already be set up. Unlike a Dell, it shouldn't complain about the size of system memory. It'll boot from the floppy. <laughs> boot from USB. Oops. And then it'll crash. Glorious. <laughs> oh boy, that's a wonderful sign. Now it is booting from USB without the help of the floppy. This is trying. It's really slow. Maybe I should have got out the uh, CD instead, the DVD. Okay, so, get the right mouse first. Install now. I'm being floppy for some reason. Windows 7 Professional, Service Pack 1. Custom installation. We are going to delete this. Delete, delete. Use all storage space. So, there we go. I always wondered why that hit 100%, but it actually does the copying when it's expanding the files. I always found that rather odd. Okay. Reboot. Takes forever to post. I did go over to the CD, which, as it turns out, actually wasn't that much faster. It was still faster, but it wasn't that much faster. <laughs> I wanted to boot from the Hardboard hard drive. It's funny, it's checking video performance. Yet it seeks the floppy drive. 
I'll fill in all this information and I'll come back. Okay, I'm going to need to get audio and video drivers because we are running the frame buffer driver right now, I believe. Yeah, we're just running the frame buffer driver and it doesn't have the audio either. So, here's to hoping we can actually get those things. They're ATI, I believe, though, so. No, and HP's infinite desire to be stupid. They don't have the audio driver, so I have to download it from elsewhere. Hopefully it works. This is a Vista driver. <laughs> so this might not actually work. Probably complain that I'm not running Windows Vista. Although it doesn't seem to have done so. I hope this is 64-bit Windows. It should be. Yeah, it is. We'll take a look at that in a minute. I always thought the Realtek logo was actually rather cool. Okay. We'll reboot later, because I'm going to be installing the video driver, which HP did have. Well, not for the small form factor, and only for the micro tower, or mini tower as it actually is. It's ATI Express 200 graphics. You do actually have audio now, Realtek AC97 audio. It's pretty cool. Video driver does not seem to have started to install. Oh, here we go. Oh, great. Yep, this isn't going to work. Let's go for a... we'll go for a custom install. Yes, I do. We'll see what this actually is. Oh, I'm surprised. It actually is the driver. Usually these stupid things are just the catalyst install manager. Which is completely useless. So we'll install all that junk and then we'll have video at the end of it, hopefully. Alright, hopefully when this is all said and done, we'll actually have not only Aeroglass, it's done taking forever. We'll have Aeroglass, and we'll be able to run the Windows Experience Index, and then that will pretty much... Oh, it is already running the Windows Experience Index, there we go. And then I'll install the programs. This thing is basically going to get... Well, I have to install the updates too, but I'll install the programs. This thing is basically going to get Butt Broadcaster and the WeatherStar 4000 emulator. I'll probably install VNC on it. Actually, I'll have to install VNC on it. Oh, yeah, it did. 2.3 on graphics. It's not really all that good. You know what's funny? I think the, uh... Oh, then again, just having thought about it now, that is a DDR-based machine, so... Naturally, it would be slower. But the CPU does get a pretty good rating. For a serial ATA hard drive, it's awfully slow. Which kind of sucks. Anyway, all right, we are beginning the software installation process. <laughs> Oops, I'll have to install .NET first. Really? Look at that little piece of stupidity, it's now working. And taking forever. Apparently it's got to download all the files for all the operating systems. It can't figure out... Oh, wait a minute. This is running under Windows 7 64-bit. This is Microsoft we're talking about, by the way. 
their product. What the hell? No idea why that can't be done. That's actually kind of stupid. Okay, so that's done. I keep grabbing the wrong mouse. So now this shouldn't complain. It better not ask me for my password again. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do on video is set up the Weather Star 4000 emulator. That's fine. I don't really care. It's the first time I have run it. Really? What's the display resolution we're at, at anyway? <laughs> 1024 by 768. That's pretty high. I wonder if it could even support 1280 by 1024. Or if this monitor was limited to. Oh, okay. It can. I think I was as high as it went, though. At least 800 pixels in height. Yeah, it's close enough. Who cares? Of course I want to run the program anyway. Load config files. So I'm going to just use the Buffalo one. Set that as default. Validate the data. So that way I can't complain about it. It's all validated. Shouldn't have to do anything. We'll set it to full screen. Turn on looping. And I'll change all the other details later. So if we save and exit, we'll get all that information. Should be able to start it. It'll probably crash because my life is a comedy. And there we go. It actually works. So far. Here we go. Come on. There we are. It actually does manage to work. Now the big question will be whether that works over VNC. Because it did not on the previous system. And I imagine it probably won't here too. Oh no. Whatever are we going to do about that? Now, unfortunately, it does not work over VNC, but I do have ways to correct that. But I'm going to conclude the video here, so thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.